49ers. You know, they uh, punched out those always pugilistic Patriots drapes on <laughs> Sunday. That pesky Patriots team. Yeah. They're always a handful. 49ers handle them. Getting back to 500 with more on where this 49ers season is. We catch up with NBC Sports Bay Area 49er analyst and host, Rod Brooks. How are you today, Rod? And I'm going to do it again. Y'all come in with <laughs> fire buffer music. That's I have, I, hey, hey, if you ask him that question, yes, I have five on it. Just let me know. Uh, listen, oh, okay. I see how you are, Rod. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask Jay to play some police, but he, of course, had a better idea. So thanks uh, for your time. Yeah. As always. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, would you say that any fan who doesn't know how to pronounce Sam Okawanu's name needs to probably get going on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn that name. And you know what? Learn the names and get to know a handful of these young guys that the Niners, you know, have integrated into the mix over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, first and foremost, Sam Okawanu. And, you know, he was kind of on the radar a little bit when they were talking about possibly getting him into the mix last weekend. And obviously he exploded with the way that he played. But, you know, if the Niners are, are going to get through this stretch where they feel like they got something rolling. And I, I think if they're going to ultimately get to the Super Bowl and win it, they're going to have to rely on young guys like Okawanu and Malik Mustafa, who played 100% of the snaps. It was 64 mm. defensive snaps. He played all the snaps and he's getting better. You're going to need to see more D winners at linebacker because, you know, we talked about Devondre Campbell and coverage is not necessarily working. You know, D. Winters only had seven, eight, and seven snaps, uh, but he was able to get in there, and and it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't bad for him. Evan Anderson, another guy, Renardo Green, another young guy. So yeah, Okuwanu is the name that jumps out, and it's the one you really got to work on, as I have, and that's why I keep saying it, Sam <laughs> Okuwanu because I've worked on it. But that's not the only name of a young Niner player you need to know. There's some other ones as well. Yeah, you can't look at the name because that's no help. If you look at it, you're going to say yeah, that's going to mess you up. Totally right? different. So you got to just. <laughs> and, and this is inside baseball, and I know the listeners don't care, and I'm sorry, but this is an absolute broadcasting guy conversation <laughs> because you just nailed it. You cannot look at Sam Oklahoma's name as it is spelled and try and pronounce it because you will absolutely get it wrong and you don't want to do that. So you don't look at the name, you know how to do it phonetically, and you feel like you got a handle on it. <laughs> Hey, Rod, uh, you know, before we look ahead to this week, uh, let, let's talk about last week, 30 to 13. The score indicates, you know, they, they mopped up the floor with the Patriots. How did you feel about that performance? How'd you come out of that game feeling? Well, I went into the game thinking, and I said this on the air, not only is this a should win because the Niners were better than the Patriots on paper and they proved that on the field, but it was a must win for the Niners because not only – could they not afford to go down one, three after four games in the season? You just couldn't lose to a team like the Patriots that even if you didn't watch it, you knew that they just weren't good. And they definitely weren't the Patriots of old that would go in and wax everybody. So it, it, they, they did what they were supposed to do. But I don't, I don't take away from the performance of individual Niners players and the Niners as a collective, really offensive defense because special teams continues to be a train wreck. But I don't take anything away from, from offense and defense and how they won that game based on who they played. They did what they are capable of doing, and they did what they were supposed to do. They, they controlled both, uh, both lines of scrimmage. They had better skill position players on both sides of the ball. And those players individually, and again, as the collective, played up to their capabilities and up to the standards that we have as observers, that the fans have as fans and 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 the players have of themselves and the coaches as well. Rod Brooks with us. Rod, this is an observation, not a criticism. Brock Purdy is definitely hanging on to the ball a little longer than he than we're used to. Um, how, what kind of different defenses uh, is he seeing right now that's that's requiring him to do that? You know what? I'm, I'm going to go in a different direction because I, I noticed that a couple of weeks ago against the Rams that he was hanging on to the ball a little bit longer. And I, I think specifically in that game, it was because – the Niners' offensive line, all, all the way across the board, uh, had uh, had their worst game of this very young season. But in the game against the Patriots, I think he was hanging on in that ball because he wanted to sling that thing down the field. Uh -huh. and what did he do in that game? 
slung that thing down the field. He's got the most completions, Cody, this season over 25 yards, more than any quarterback in the league. That's 14 completions, again, over 25-plus 25, uh, 25 yards. So I, I think he, he's just he, – he was comfortable with the protection against the Patriots that he was getting from his offensive line because, again, the line did their job, but it's just not that good. But I think he just – he was waiting in because he wanted guys to get open downfield, and he was looking to uncork, and he did uncork a couple of times. So mm-hmm. I we're seeing – the, the evolution of Brock Purdy as a passer. He's clearly uh, stronger on the arm. You know, now he is a full season plus away from rehabbing that elbow injury he suffered at the NFC Championship game a couple of years ago. He's clearly stronger, lower body. I mean, the, man, the homie is not skipping leg day. And the athleticism <laughs> that he has always, uh, always had is now coming together with, with more muscle and just an understanding as to how to play the game. So he's moving, he's running, uh, getting first downs and what have you. And I think when anything, he feels comfortable knowing the offense, knowing the personnel, that he can hang on to it just a little bit longer, escape from trouble if he has to, and if he sees something, just sling that bad boy down the field. Hey, Rod, uh, is it, when I look at Brandon Ayuk, is it just you know some rust got to knock it off, or are you seeing something – bigger, uh, a more troubling concern here uh, through the first four games? No, I, I really think that it is all based on the fact that he wasn't around there, but he didn't participate in camp and in preseason. And, and I think this this is maybe not a bigger issue for the league, but in my estimation, and I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this, I think the first month of the season was really uneven for basically every yeah. team in the league, with the exception of the Minnesota Vikings. Right. I, think, I think offensive line play across the board was atrocious the first couple of weeks. And I think you draw a direct line from atrocious offensive line play to not enough practicing, not enough playing in the preseason and in training camp. So, I mean, how many teams are one and three and two and two? The Niners mm-hmm. being one of those teams. And it was just, the play was really uneven. I think it's going to get better now that we get in October. And you have four weeks of, of actual real football being played. So I, I think that's Brandon Ayuk's issue. I think it's a league-wide issue. Now, if we get past this week with Arizona's defense being comically bad, and even the game against Seattle, uh, Seattle's defense is not very good. I think if Brandon Ayuk is still not, not up to par, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, these next couple of weeks, then I think we, some serious questions need to be asked. And, and quite frankly, I don't know what those questions are. But I think the, the, the time is running out for people like me to say, nah, he wasn't around for training camp. Because, mm-hmm. well, in preseason, because you just had an approximation of preseason over these last four weeks. Yeah, I'm with you on uh, patience as a virtue with Brandon Ayuk. The one thing that stands out to me, just, you know, crunching some numbers, the catch percentage uh, for him, you know, the, the number of targets – Mm-hmm. Relative to the number of catches, like whoa, he's not catching nearly as many passes, right? And and I think that's more to speaks more to the the chemistry. It's not like he's dropping everything, but they're just not connecting. Um, yeah, you know. yeah, I, I I think that's what it is really across the board. I'm I'm not down with the whole. Oh, he got his money. He's not trying. I I, I think that's sucker nonsense. If you say that, um, it's disrespectful to Brandon Ayuk to say mm-hmm. he got money now. He's not trying. Because uh, that's a, a, I don't believe it's true, and B, you don't know anyway. Um, I, I don't think he's angry or he's upset and he doesn't want to be with the Niners and he's sulking. I completely don't believe that. He and Brock Purdy had uh, a, 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 just a, almost a molecular type relationship in yeah. terms of quarterback and receiver. And that came from the fact that they worked their tails off together to establish that chemistry. You know, from the end of the Super Bowl to the first uh, game of of this season is a long, long time for those two guys not to get together and work on that chemistry. So basically, you lost it. Now they're trying to find it back in real time where games are important and guys are trying to knock your block off on the other side. I think that chemistry will come. But the beneficiary of them not having that chemistry is a cat like Jawan Jennings, Mm. who, strangely enough, he signed an under contract or was signed an under contract relative to, to... uh, uh, Brandon Ayu, those two guys have been in the lab working together with OTAs, training camp, and the little preseason that they played. So 
to me, it's it's a pretty obvious answer. Hey, Rod, uh, let's spin ahead uh, and look at this week's matchup uh, versus the Cardinals. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, uh-oh, watch out for the Cardinals. You know, they're going to, you know, provide a tough test uh, for San Francisco. Then they lose to uh, Washington this past week. Uh, what kind of matchup uh, do you expect uh, and, and what kind of test do you think the Cardinals provide for the uh, 49ers? Um, start on the offense, I, I just in all respect to James Conner. Um, very good running back, and the Niners got better at stopping the run uh, against the Patriots. They need to continue that. It'll be interesting to see if they can do that with Connor, a guy who's given them trouble, even when the Niners have been at their best defensively across the board. Um, you know, I know Kyler Murray could be the butt of jokes, but all of a sudden, if you let that cat get loose and you let him get a rhythm, he can make an opposing defense's life miserable, especially with the way he moves. And the Niners, along with the Basically, every other team in the league had trouble with uh, running quarterbacks, use that catch-all term, uh, because I value my safety, and I know the game. I'm not going to say anything bad about Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. I don't need Marvin Harrison Sr. getting at me. Google it. <laughs> right. you know no, I don't, hello. Hey, hey, hello. he is from Philly. That's how we roll, Rod. We, hey, he is from Philly. I knew it. I, I set you up for it. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, hey. Hey, hey, so you know, and we're going to leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> you know, Robert Harrison Jr. Is, is, is an incredible young wide receiver. Um, it'll be a, a, a good test for the Snyder secondary that, again, looked better last week, but the Patriots really didn't have anything on the outside to threaten them. The problem with the, the Cardinals is, A, they're the Cardinals, and they're playing the Niners. The Niners scored 80 points on them last year. Brock Purdy got loose on them a mm. ton last year. And their defense is terrible. They, you know, 29th in points per game. They're giving up almost 27 points a game, uh, 46 rush yards a game and change. They're one of the worst teams in total defense. And like I said, Rock Purdy last year had great success against the Arizona Cardinals. So defensively, uh, they're trash. <laughs> you know, they, I mean, they, they are, they are. This is just probably what it is. If you look at the numbers. Rod is throwing blows No, he, he on fire today. <laughs> you on one today, Rod. I see how it is. But no, but they're, but they're not good. I mean, just listen, they're playing and the numbers speaks for itself. But here's the trick. If the Niners defensively don't continue to get better, this Niner offense, which is clearly the better of the two units, the Niner offense might end up being in a shootout. And mm. I, I don't think that's something you necessarily want to get into these Cardinals. Yeah, I thought he's going to make another Marvin Harrison reference. Right. I guess not. I guess not. He told the yeah. kids to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Enjoy the game. We'll see you on TV, and we'll talk to you next week. All right, Phil. Y'all be easy. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, man. Oh, uh, when Good we come stuff. back. Yeah. Well, Devontae Adams, where are we 